Welcome to Fishing with Yo-Yos Part 1, where I'm going to discuss what is a fishing yo-yo and talk a little about how it works. All it is is a mechanical spring-loaded reel that contains about 10 feet of nylon line. It has a swivel on the end where you can attach the fish hook of your choice, and it's got a little trigger mechanism. And the way these things work, you suspend them over the water, say from a tree limb, pull out some line, set your little trigger mechanism, hook baited in the water, the fish comes along, takes the hook, and when he takes the line, that triggers the little trigger mechanism here, releasing the spring tension. That sudden release of spring tension sets the hook, and then your fish is now fighting against the spring. These devices have very little spring tension when the string is fully retracted to the maximum extension of about 10 feet. They probably produce about a pound and a half of force. If you catch a 10 pound catfish on one of these, it's going to run that line out to the full extent, but when he relaxes, it's going to pull it back in a little bit. Keep in mind, the spring is relentless. He's going to fight that spring over and over, and he's slowly but steadily going to tire out. And that's going to work to your advantage. Because what happens, you know, when you first get a fish on here, if he's big enough and strong enough that he's going to tear this yo-yo up, it's probably going to happen in the first 10 or 15 minutes. Because when that strain gets to the full length, when he hits the end, it's kind of a strong jerk on the yo-yo. And that fish can hammer that yo-yo over and over. But as he tires, he hammers that yo-yo less and less hard, and hopefully if you have a nice flexible limb, when he hits the end of the strain, limb's going to get a little bit, and so that's going to take a lot of the force off the yo-yo and sort of act as an extra shock absorber. And it's really going to protect your yo-yo. It's going to reduce the number of straightened hooks and hooks that tear out of the fish's mouth. And it's also going to reduce the likelihood that you'll snap this line. This is about a 60 pound test, but if it jerks and gets snapped hard over and over and over, it can snap. So the more springy and flexible a limb you can find to suspend these from, the better. You tie these, say, to the cleat of a boat dock that doesn't have any give at all. It's a lot easier for even a small fish to break something and get away. Now, there are several manufacturers of these devices, and the only real difference between them all is the catch mechanism and how it's built. By and large, the body of the yo-yo is virtually identical in all cases. And I'm going to show you some examples of yo-yos from two or three different manufacturers here in a moment. This first yo-yo has a little wire catch which is hinged and it swings out away from the yo-yo wheel and you swing it in to set it. So let's say we run some line out, generate a little spring tension. We swing this little wire bail over against the wheel on that notch and that catches now the yo-yo is set. Fish comes along and hits the line, swings the little wire out away from the yo-yo, releasing the spring tension and catching the fish. This is a second style of yo-yo. It has a little wire teeter-totter trigger and just like before you pull out some line and in this case you push the little teeter-totter down against the yo-yo wheel catching there on the corner and when the fish tugs it raises the teeter-totter away from the yo-yo wheel, releasing the spring tension. Again, the body, the main mechanism, and the uh, bulk of the yo-yo is almost identical. This is an old and somewhat corroded yo-yo that uh, shows a slightly different third style catch mechanism. In this case, we still have a teeter-totter style trigger, but it's a little bar made out of sheet metal rather than a wire. And Again, you pull out some tension, you lower the teeter-totter against the wheel, and when the fish treasures, it raises the teeter-totter, releasing the spring. Let's talk a little about how you would actually use one of these in a fishing situation. You find a nice flexible limb, and you want to attach your yo-yo to it, but try not to tie the yo-yo if you can help it. I like to have a loop of line. You can drape the loop over a tree limb and drop your yo-yo through the loop, cinch that up, now you've got a nice yo-yo um, hanging there from the limb. It's not going to go anywhere, but when you get ready to pick it up, you just pull the yo-yo back through the loop, and boom, you're done. I see people over and over and over, they tie these things with a knot, and then when they come back to get them, especially if the fish has been caught and snug that line up really tight, there's no way to get it 
it all off without cutting the line, and then they leave six inches of line hanging on the limb. It's unsightly. It takes a lot of time. Why in the world wouldn't you want a loop that you could simply rig up a slip knot, and you can attach your yo-yo in five seconds. You can detach it in five seconds, and you can use the same piece of line over and over and over. The fish you're after is going to determine the bait, and then what kind of bait you use is going to drive what kind of fishing hook that you actually attach to the end. Um, you know, it's helpful to kind of know the depth of water you're fishing. Of course, you're limited to about 10 feet of line, so you've got a limited range of how deep you can fish these. Um, you may want to use some marker tape or do something to make your yo-yo more visible because you're going to have to go back and run these devices later, possibly during the night, and to make it easier to find your tree limb. I'll sometimes use something like this flagging or surveyor tape. This is just a plastic uh, film with fluorescent. There's no sticky on it. And you can cut a six inch or one foot piece and attach to the limb with a thumbtack. You might pull a little longer piece off and wrap it around and tie it to the limb. But uh, the fluorescence of this material makes it very visible. You can get this in orange and yellow and several different colors. And it's very helpful. Uh, finding your yo-yos and not losing them. Of course, keep in mind, anything that you do to make the yo-yo more visible to you is going to make it more visible to the rest of the world. And there are some unethical people out there that will run your yo-yos and take your fish. They'll even steal your yo-yos. So, um, you know, it's got some pros and cons to it when you use something like this to make your devices more visible. So what are the advantages of fishing with yo-yos? If you set some of these devices out, you can be fishing while at the same time sitting back at camp around the campfire, be hiking the trail with your family, or one of my personal favorites, you'd be taking a nap. Um, another thing these lets you do, let's say you're fishing a couple of dozen of these, you can spread your hooks out over a wide area. Maybe you're not sure where the fish are biting, but you might try some of these along the bank, maybe a few tied to trees, like cypress scattered out and across the open part of the shallow lake. You can try a lot of different spots, and then when you go back and run these the first time in the evening, you can take note of you know where the fish are biting and where they're not, and you may choose or elect to move some of these yo-yos from the unproductive spots to the hotter spots where the fish seem to be biting. Um, they're also versatile in that you can tie them almost anywhere. A tree limb, uh, I see people you know, sometimes have these hanging from a boat dock, from a stall, from a boat stall in a marina. Uh, you know, snags along the bends of rivers, fallen trees uh, from the bank of a river. Um, if you don't, let's say you've got a small river and there's no trees along your stretch of bank. I've seen people take a piece of PVC pipe or bamboo pole, stick that in the bank at about a 30 degree angle so that it sticks out over the water. They hang their yo-yo from the end. They've got an artificial limb. The pole's going to have some flex to it, which makes it a very good artificial limb. And uh, also, you don't even have to have a boat to use these. If you're using something like a piece of pipe or a bamboo pole to stick these out over the water, you know, you can set those from the bank. If you've got some hip waders, you can uh, might get a few foot out into the water, you know, and attach these to some tree limbs and so forth. So they're incredibly versatile. Be aware that yo-yos are not legal in every state. In states that do allow yo-yos, uh, you'll find that the rules vary somewhat as far as how many of these devices that you can fish as an individual. Um, you'll see differences in whether they have to be attended during daylight hours. Uh, some states require that you be within the ear or eye shot of these devices when fishing during the day. You may be able to fish them unattended, but only during evening hours from dusk till dawn. You'll also see some differences uh, as far as identification information that's required. You may have to put your name and address, possibly driver's license number, or possibly vehicle license number to identify uh, the owner of the yo-yo. Um, obviously, it's your responsibility to know your local fishing regulations and to follow them. That's the end of part one. Appreciate you watching, and if you have any constructive criticism or comments, I love uh, getting that feedback from people. In part two, we're going to talk about how to actually rig your yo-yos and get ready for a yo-yo fishing expedition. There are a number of things we can do to make the process more effective and efficient. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode, and good luck fishing.